gonna start on into the tracker. Uh, we're gonna drain the crankcase first. So what we need to do is your drain plug is gonna be right here. It's right behind your oil pump uh, access point and your oil filter. So we're gonna drop the crankcase oil and I did let the engine warm up for several minutes here to get everything moving. This is going to hold about nine quarts, so make sure you've got an adequate uh, container to catch that. And now that the oil is uh, draining out, we're going to remove the oil filter. And you can see that I've got a little bit of a leak right here. It's dripping. The reason why it's doing that is there's a copper washer right here that after a couple years of uh, oil changes, they get damaged and frail. I believe I've got another one, so I'm going to replace that and I'll show you how to do that. So to remove the oil filter, we're just going to loosen this nut right here. And we'll crack it open and you'll see oil will start to come out the, uh, the top here. And we're just going to let that drain out for a little bit. Now most of the oil is drained out of the filter compartment now. We're just going to remove that, or loosen that bolt and pull it out. Just make sure you've got a hold of it, because if you drop it, pieces are going to fly everywhere. And it's difficult to get back together, so just make sure you're able to catch it once it comes down. Well, I've got the uh, filter cap off and cleaned up a little bit. We're going to have to take this apart, and you're going to see right here there's a little snap ring. So I'm going to take a tool there and try to pry that up. And you want to be fairly gentle with these. They're not much of a snap ring, but they, they're enough to hold things together. So that's what that's going to look like. Set that off to the side. And then pull this little uh, washer ring off. And then tip it upside down. This plate will come off. And then you've got a spring underneath with another washer below it. So we'll get all this cleaned up here. And then this pin just pops right out. And then you can see right here, this copper washer is the culprit. If you turn it, you can see how it's painted. So this washer has been on there for quite a while. I've had the tractor for a few years and it was repainted well before I got it. Um, so I'm guessing that's been on there for quite a while. So let me get these cleaned up. All right, got everything cleaned up. Now we're gonna remove that bad copper washer. So that simply just slides right off and you can tell that it's been on there a little while. So I do have another one. Part number is gonna be A521R-1. And that's what that's gonna look like. So I'm just gonna slide that right over the top and then we can start the reassembly process here. So this pin goes back in. Put your flat washer on the bottom. And then your spring goes over top. Then your plate. And then your ring looking washer. And then push that down. And then here's the tricky part here is getting that snap ring back on. Just try to work one edge in. While trying to hold that plate down to give you some room. And 
and then just make sure that it slides back into that groove where it came from. And you can see that's spring loaded for where the, uh, the filter goes. So now we've got a nice bright new copper washer on there that will hopefully keep it from leaking. So now back up under the tractor, right up in here, there is a rubber gasket for the uh, oil filter cap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove that and I'm gonna replace that. So take a pick or take a screwdriver and just pry in there and it should come right out. Now this doesn't have to be replaced every oil change. I know in the past I've, I've run them for two or three years and they seem to be fine. Uh, but eventually they're going to start leaking, they're going to start getting brittle. Um, so I've now gotten the habit of every time I just replace this every oil change. So it's going to be a personal preference on what you want to do. But once you've done that, make sure that there's no rubber pieces left in this area here. Just run your pick through, take a visual look at it, make sure, because if you have uh, debris or any pieces of the old gasket in there, when you put the new one in, it's not going to fit properly and it's not going to uh, seal the oil. You're going to get some leaks. So clean that out. And then we're going to put the new one in. So part number from John Deere on this one is going to be uh, 1A519R. And just ask your John Deere dealer when you buy your filter to give you the gasket with it as they don't come together. <clears throat> they used to, but they don't anymore. So when you install this, you're just going to do the opposite. You're just going to fit it right back up in there. And that's that. Next up, we're going to do the oil filter. And that part number is going to be AR26350. I believe that John Deere just recently changed the part number on these, but these... Oil filters are the same for most of the two cylinders all the way up through uh, the new generation, such as the, the 4020, they use the same oil filter. So then on these, you're gonna see kind of a gasket here and a gasket here. What I like to do is I like to just put a little bit of oil here and on the bottom so it doesn't stick up in there. I'll just take a little oil. All right, and then you can see this stud right here. We're gonna try to line that up with this while holding the oil filter on there. Sometimes it could be a pain in the butt, but we'll try to get it on there. That one went pretty smooth. Make sure your cap is center on that uh, gasket and then just get it finger tight. And then take your wrench and tighten this nut up. You don't want to tighten this too much because if you go too far, you can bend or snap that stud that goes up inside. And if you snap that off or bend that and you got to replace it, you got to disassemble the oil pump and go all the way up in there. It's open heart surgery. So uh, don't over tighten this and you can always tighten it up after you um, put oil in the tractor and run it to see if you have leaks or not. So we're just going to go about there. Then we're going to put the oil drain plug back in. Now we're going to fill the crankcase back up um, here on your pulley side. This is going to be your oil fill for the crankcase. So I'll just pop this off. And this is going to hold around nine quarts. What I like to run is I run a 1540 uh, T4 Rotella diesel engine oil uh, in it, and it seems to, uh, seems to work well. Go ahead and add your 
nine quarts. So I finished putting in the uh, nine quarts, so we just need to put the cap back on. This just needs to be uh, hand tight. I'm gonna have to crank this one down. And then what you wanna do is you'll wanna start the tractor, run it for anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute, just to give it time for the oil to fill up the oil filter um, compartment. And then what you wanna do is shut the tractor down and then go down here and then check your oil. You're gonna to wanna to pull the dipstick out and then you'll wanna to look to see where your oil level is gonna be at. And then you'll wanna go underneath, check the uh, drain plug and the oil filter cap to make sure there's no leaks. If it is leaking around the, uh, the nut and the oil filter cap, just tighten that down just a little bit. After the oil change, we're gonna take the uh, oil bath uh, air filter off. So all that is is gonna be this Knob here, we're gonna unscrew that. We'll make sure you got your hand underneath the uh, oil container for the air filter. So loosen this enough to the point where it'll slide out. Let's need a little more. And then that will come down. Gonna have some drips, so what I like to do is just put a rag underneath, and let that drip off. And then we'll clean the air filter. So I pour out all the old oil that was in the air filter. And this is our, our main tractor. We cut hay with it, we rake hay with it. Um, we disc with it, seed with it, um, so it gets worked pretty good. This is what the inside of the air filter is going to look like. You can see all the sludge and stuff moving around there. It's not horrible, um, but we definitely want to get that cleaned out. So what I like to do is wipe it out the best I can, spray it with carb cleaner, and get it so it's just uh, shiny metal in there. So now we're nice and shiny again. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill uh, oil and just use the same that you use in the crankcase. Um, I use 1540 in the crankcase. I've got some extra 10W30, so I'm going to use that in here. Um, but I'm just going to fill it to this oil level here, and then we'll get it reinstalled. And we're just going to tighten this back up. So it's nice and tight. Now we're gonna move on to the transmission. This thing holds about eight gallons of your oil. So make sure that you've got, you know, a five gallon bucket or, you know, um, an additional container to hold all of that. There's two drain ports on this thing. This one right here is gonna be the, the front of the transmission. And then you've got this one back here that's going to be the uh, rear axle housing. So I'm gonna pop both of those and we'll get it uh, drained out. Now we gotta fill the transmission. So this is gonna be your transmission fill here. Your cap may look a little different than this, and it should look like the crankcase cap. Uh, this is obviously not the original one, but it'll be in the same location. And like I said before, this thing's gonna hold about eight gallons. So what I do is I put a funnel in. Pour a whole five gallon bucket in, and I switch to a pump for the last three gallons so I can watch it run at the bottom, which I'll show you. And I run 8090 in uh, 
the transmission of my two cylinders. So I poured the first five gallons of uh, transmission fluid in. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is obviously put your transmission uh, drain plugs back in before you do this. Um, but I'm gonna finish off the last three with this pump here. Um, I bought that off of Amazon for like 30 bucks. It works great. That way, when you fill this transmission, you need to be down here. If I can show you. That bolt right here needs to come out. That's your indicator of uh, if it's full or not. So pop that out and then pump transmission fluid in until it runs out of that hole and then put that plug back in and then you know that it's full. Now we can't forget about the first reduction gear uh, housing here. So on the top of the belt pulley, this is going to be your uh, fill area for the first reduction uh, gear. I suggest taking this off first before you drain the oil because this area right in here is renowned for just gathering a bunch of crud and stuff like that. So in case some of that falls in, when you drain it, hopefully that'll come out with it. So we'll try to clean it up the best you can. And we'll loosen up these two bolts here. And this one can be a little tricky to, uh, the cover can be a little tricky to get out because of the uh, clutch lever here. Sometimes you gotta maneuver that a little bit. This bolt won't come out unless this is moved here. There we go. And slide that cover out. And you can kind of see how grimy that, uh, that gets with all the stuff it collects here. So we're going to clean that up and then we'll uh, drain it. So up underneath, this is gonna be your drain plug for the first reduction gear. So we're gonna take that off. And it should hold about a quart and a half. So once you've got the first reduction gear drained out and your drain plug back in, we're gonna add a quart and a half of transmission oil for uh, 80, 90 weight is what I use. We'll pour that right in. Got our one and a half quarts in, now we're just gonna reinstall the cover. Now we'll move on to the uh, PTO housing. It's up under the rear of the tractor, right in front of the uh, draw bar mount. This right here is going to be for your PTO. So we're going to loosen that up. That was on there. And this is going to hold about four and a half quarts, I believe. With the PTO housings drained out, put your drain plug back in. You'll see up here, this is gonna be your filler plug. I already took that out. Once you get the drain plug out, it'll drain slowly. Pull the filler plug, it'll allow air in and it'll uh, drain a lot faster. So I pulled that out. So that's where you're gonna add your um, PTO oil and I, I use 10W30. Now, on the bottom here, 
you'll see where it says oil level and it's in flush with or in line with this bolt here. So we're going to take this bolt out. It's just like the transmission. This is going to be your bolt that tells you when it's full. So we're going to leave this out and we're going to add approximately four and a half quarts of 10W30 or until the oil starts running out of this hole. Once it runs out of that hole, then you know it's full, put that back in, put your filler cap back on, and then your PTO is done. Now we'll drain the hydraulics. So the drain for the power troll is gonna be right here. And it's gonna hold about 13 quarts. So make sure you've got an adequate uh, container for that. And that was a mess. So once you've got the hydraulics drained, put your drain plug back in. And then this right here is going to be your filler and your level check. So you're going to add the hydraulic oil in here. It's going to be around 13 quarts. And then you're going to use this uh, dipstick on here to tell how full it is. So get it up to the full mark and replace this and you're good to go. We've got all the oils done that we're going to do on the tractor. Now it's to flush the cooling system. This right here is going to be your drain plug. This is an old um, heater. I don't use it at all. It's just the, the plug here. But just be cautious because this thing holds seven gallons. So make sure you've got enough receptacles. I've got two five-gallon pails here to collect it. And it's a good idea to let the tractor run for a little bit before you do this. Any sediment in the uh, cooling system will start floating because of the water pump pushing it around and it'll uh, drain out. So once the coolant is drained and you've got the drain plug back in, we'll open up the radiator cap. You push down and twist. And a tip when you're draining the coolant, if it's draining slow, pop this off. It'll allow air in and it'll drain a lot faster. Um, when it comes to filling radiators, I refuse to use anything other than distilled water um, and then full concentrate antifreeze. The reason I use distilled water is it's purified, it's clean. If you use well water, you're gonna have uh, calcium, lime, rust, all of that stuff uh, in there. And I don't want that in my radiator. That's just gonna gum it up and uh, rust it out. So I use distilled water. So this is gonna take around seven gallons. So I'm gonna put in three and a half gallons of distilled water and three and a half gallons of uh, full concentrate green antifreeze. So I've got it full up to the baffles here. Uh, maybe put a little bit much in there, but that's all right. I'll show you what's gonna happen with that. Um, put this back on. See these little knobs right here? Get those lined up, push down. Push down and twist until it's tight. If you put too much antifreeze in it, there's gonna be a little drain plug right here. As it gets hot, the level will rise and any antifreeze that's over what it needs it will start to drain out of here and it'll run down and you'll see it dripping uh, out of the bottom of the tractor. That's fine, it'll stop once it's um, at the proper level.